Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's celebration of 25 years of the William C. Norris Institute. My name is Chris Puto, and as Dean of the University's Opus College of Business, it is my great pleasure to host this wonderful event which not only celebrates the successes of an extraordinary vision by Bill Norris, but also recognizes the individual who championed it, my friend, Norb Berg. The University of St. Thomas has long been recognized for its commitment to educating the future business leaders of our state and of our nation, with a particular emphasis on providing opportunities for entrepreneurial and intrapreneurial endeavors. In other words, we teach our students to bring creative problem solving to both new and established businesses. We have the added advantage of not only educating these aspiring business leaders, but also in the case of budding entrepreneurs, providing them with the support, the funding, and other resources to make their ideas count. In the past 25, for the past 25 years, the William C. Norris Institute has been instrumental in translating these business concepts into practice by stimulating innovation with startup investment and assistance. Housed at the University of St. Thomas for the past 13 years, the Institute works with entrepreneurs committed to making a difference in the world. Since its inception in 1988, the Institute has helped fund more than 40 startup businesses at St. Thomas, leading the creation of more than 200 full-time jobs in Minnesota and more than 3,000 part-time jobs around the country. At this point, I would very much like to introduce, or have them stand and be recognized, the Norris Institute Board of Advisors. Several of them are here, and I think Tom Triplett is here. He was one of the founding direct members of the board. Will you all please stand so we can recognize you, those of you on the board? None of this would have been possible, however, without the commitment and vision of Bill Norris. And that commitment was fostered and implemented by the person we are here to celebrate today, Norbert Berg, a true champion of creating programs to address society's unmet needs. Throughout today's program, you will be treated to more about Norb's impact on the Norris Institute and on his role in inspiring social entrepreneurship. We will also update you on the latest developments at the Institute, which are impressive and I think you'll find exciting. But first, I invite you to join me in welcoming Dr. Julie Sullivan, President of the University of St. Thomas and a champion in her own right of social entrepreneurship. Dr. Sullivan. Well, it is my pleasure to welcome so many of you here to this wonderful celebration today. Um, social entrepreneurship has been a passion of mine for many years, and uh, how wonderful it is to come together today to celebrate both Bill Norris and Norberg and what they have done together in creating the William Norris Institute for us and its 25th anniversary. When I discovered that we had such an institute and the impact it had had on really helping young companies get started, particularly young companies that had some St. Thomas affiliation, I was thrilled and we're already seeing the impact of the Norris Institute on many of our students and alumni. But social entrepreneurship is something that uh, has attracted my interest and my enthusiasm, and my work, as I said, for many years, primarily because at being a part of a Catholic university, we have a, we have a mission, we have a responsibility, we hold ourselves accountable for making a positive difference on this world. As you know, in our mission statement at the University of St. Thomas, we talk about advancing the common good. The tagline for the University of St. Thomas is challenge yourself, change our world. Basically, those concepts are really one of the primary reasons I wanted to join this institution because I wanted to be a part of an institution that really was committed to creating a better world, to helping others, to building better communities, to building a stronger society. Now, it so happens that my undergraduate masters and PhD are all in business. So in my view, business has a role in doing this. And in my view, the way we are gonna make the most sustainable and long-lasting changes in this world 
are going to be those changes that are built on economic principles, those changes that, that will be sustained by doing good. It's nothing wrong with making money while you're doing good and putting that money back into doing more good. So I am thrilled that we have um, uh, the William Norris Institute. I'm thrilled that we had someone like Nor Berg to um, craft a vision for such a thing. Uh, he truly is the epitome of a social entrepreneur. I've been reading about him, and you're going to hear a lot more about him today. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I guess I'm most impressed about him is what I just learned about him, which many of you will know because he just gave me his business card. It says, champion of lost causes, dumb animals, and females in distress. So, <laughs> I guess he really is a social entrepreneur. <laughs> Uh, but we so admire all the work you have done, Norb, not only within controlled data, but in alleviating poverty, and you'll hear a lot more of these programs you've done in, in bringing jobs to people in distress and actually people in prison and others, and working with many nonprofit uh, organizations throughout our community to ensure that we are giving people the hope and the dignity of finding an economic opportunity and finding a job. And we really appreciate all the lives that you've impacted and that we as St. Thomas can have an affiliation with that legacy uh, that you continue to create in our world. So thank you very much and welcome all of you to our campus. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan. And now I invite Father Dennis Dees, President Emeritus of the University of St. Thomas, to join me to offer an invocation prior to lunch. Father Dees. Oh, good afternoon. I have to say I, I truly feel honored today to be able to um, offer the uh, grace before the meal uh, at this lunch uh, that honors an extraordinarily gifted and dedicated uh, individual whom I have uh, greatly admired since my years as a young priest when I had the privilege of sitting next to him at the uh, meetings of the board of uh, directors at St. Thomas uh, Academy where he was uh, the lead trustee at the time. And I remember during those years um, and subsequently thinking, um, um, you know that book, uh, All I Really Need to Know, I learned in kindergarten. Well, in a way, all I really need uh, to know, uh, especially about leadership, uh, I learned from quietly watching Norb Berg in action. And Norb, I thank you for that. I'm grateful. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks in a special way on this 25th anniversary of the William C. Norris Institute. We are grateful for the gifts and talents which you distribute among us. In particular this day, we give thanks for those courageous and enterprising individuals who during the span of their years develop communities and improve lives. Today, as we honor one such man, Norbert Berg, with the inaugural William C. Norris Award for Social Entrepreneurship, we recall the many ways in which our friend and honoree used his extraordinary gifts and entrepreneurial talent effectively and successfully to address some of the most pressing and urgent social problems and needs of our community. A 1955 graduate of St. John's University, Norb's life and work can serve as a much needed reminder to us here at the University of St. Thomas that you, Father, not only can, but do, in fact, work through Johnny's <laughs> on occasion. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Bon appetit.
The only way I can top that is to invite you all to enjoy your lunch. <laughs> It's always the responsibility of the master of ceremonies to interrupt all the good conversations that are in place at, at these tables. But I think we've, we're into the dessert phase of the meal, and I encourage you, please keep doing that. Um, we're ready to start the formal part of our program today. And so it is my honor now to introduce Mike Moore, who is the director of the William C. Norris Institute, Mike will provide an overview of the accomplishments the Institute has made during the past 25 years. And as you listen to what he has to say, I believe you will be amazed. Mike, please join me up here. Thank you, Dean Pudo, and welcome everyone. Chris has been a tremendous supporter of the Norris Institute for the past 12 years, and it's going to be hard to see him step down from the deanship and, and uh, move on, but he's coming back as a professor of marketing, so he'll still be around, so that'll be wonderful. And he graciously delayed his vacation to uh, MC the luncheon today, so we really appreciate that. Other St. Thomas colleagues I'd like to thank for making this occasion happen. Our event planner, Maggie Zawoski, and from the Schultz School of Entrepreneurship, Sarah McGinley, John Kamig, and Shannon Vander Hayden. They've really been uh, uh, instrumental in getting all of the arrangements done and getting you all here today. And I'd like to thank the fine guitarist, he's, there he is over there, uh, today from Virtue. <laughs> He's from Virtuosos Music Academy in Plymouth, which was founded by St. Thomas alumna Angela Jaskowiak. Um, the Norris Institute, she's shown in the uh, uh, photo there. The Norris Institute was one of the founding investors in Virtuosos, so it's good to have them here today. We're here today, of course, to honor Norb Berg. And I'm especially grateful to him for his role in creating the Norris Institute out of control data. It has been my career home for the past 17 years, and I can't imagine a better job to have than helping new technology companies get started, perhaps even the next control data. Bill Norris believed that to solve society's problems, you need collaboration among the public, private, and nonprofit sectors, and you need strong leadership, which he assembled at the Norris Institute. Building off of the innovative Plato education and training system, the Norris Institute launched initiatives in K through 12 and higher ed, nurturing them and then spinning them off as for-profits or to other non-profits. Continuous quality improvement was the mission of the Academic Quality Consortium, and Logan, begun at CDC, was further developed at the Institute and then sold to its manager, Shelley Rose, who still operates it today with the International Association of Chiefs of Police as the main client. Creating good, family-supporting jobs is the key to addressing most societal problems, and the Norris Institute first tried the collaborative approach to try to unite the various economic development agencies. Then, when I joined the Institute in 1997, we added the direct route, investing in and assisting technology-based companies in inner-city neighborhoods. Like many others, we learned that both approaches are difficult and prone to more failures than successes but are rewarding nonetheless. From those tough lessons came the current seed capital era, when Mr. Norris and the Institute Board decided to transfer it to St. Thomas, where it would have a permanent home in a setting known for entrepreneurial innovation and real-world relevant education. That transition was made possible by Tony Patami, my mentor. He taught me about evaluating inventions and inventors and working with investors to start companies. Tony was recruited to lead the Norris Institute in 1996, and he led its transition to St. Thomas while battling multiple myeloma cancer. Tony passed in 2004 and Mr. Norris in 2006, but every time I meet with a new entrepreneur and evaluate an investment opportunity, I hear their voices. Bill would always caution that we're not giving grants the entrepreneur has to earn our investment. And Tony would encourage me to use our network. See what Joe Schuster or Buddy Revelson thinks about this, he would say. 
and I still follow that just about every company I meet with. I try to network and find somebody to talk to about it and make them earn the investment. And I'm sure the, the companies that are here today would uh, agree with that, that they definitely earn that investment. To create a more viable seed fund, we expanded our mission beyond disadvantaged areas to any technology-based startup in Minnesota. But they have to be addressing important unmet needs in innovative ways. Since 2001, the Norris Institute Seed Fund has been more successful than any comparable fund I'm aware of. As you can see, our investments have enabled companies to reach early milestones that make them attractive to more risk-averse investors, multiplying our dollars more than 11 times. And we've created good high-tech jobs, as well as thousands of high-touch ones, which I'll tell you about in a minute. The Institute has a powerful education component, exposing students to investment due diligence, investor presentations, and involvement with new technology companies. And thanks to the operating support that Dean Puto has given the Institute at the Opus College of Business, all returns on investment are reinvested in new startups. Our challenge now is to keep the fund investing while we wait for the big returns to materialize. So those were our statistical outcomes, but the real excitement is in the innovative outcomes of our companies. If you didn't have a chance to visit the exhibits in the hall and in the back of the room as you arrived, please take time in your way out to talk to these amazing entrepreneurs. And here are just some of our current portfolio companies that I'll show you. This is where those 3,000 part-time jobs come from. Joe Keeley started College Nannies out of his St. Thomas dorm room in 2001. It is now a national chain of more than 70 franchisees who employ most, mostly college students as nannies and tutors. So what used to be haphazard arrangements are now carefully background checked, legal, tax paying, mentor type resources for families. The Norris Seed Fund gives preference to companies started by St. Thomas alumni like Joe, but a little over half of our investments have not been so connected. The UST in the corner of each slide that you can see there will tell you which ones have alumni founders. Bill Norris would have loved this. Small sustainable farms growing produce and fish in old buildings, providing food year round and creating agricultural and marketing jobs in disadvantaged areas. You can now buy Garden Fresh Farms produce at Whole Foods and it is served at 3M, Best Buy and Medtronic cafeterias. Streamline sells a sturdier, easy rolling IV pole that docks into the bed and retracts to avoid tipping when moving the patient. The Dermaclose device uses traction to cause skin to expand and cover wounds in hours rather than doing a costly and disfiguring skin graft. It was used last year to close the chest wounds from separating conjoined twins. Clodit is a natural, inexpensive coagulant for veterinary use that is being investigated for human applications. Instead of enclosing a return envelope for transactions, the ricochet envelope can be opened, resealed, and returned at a reduced postage rate. Retailers and distributors lose millions because of out-of-stock and overstock inventory. Cyanic addresses that by attaching passive RFID chips to all merchandise and installing antenna-equipped racks at retailers, like this Disney movie rack and at distributors like this wired interstate batteries truck and the thousands of retail and service sites that stock their batteries. Cyanix co-founder Harley Feldman is a former Control Data and Ceridian executive. If you've had a catheter procedure, you know the pain from the hours of pressure applies to, applied to close the femoral artery puncture. The closest device uses your own blood, filters out the blood thinner, and injects it into the artery wall to form a clot that seals within five to 10 minutes. For those who like to shop for cars without trekking from lot to lot, Automotion's app lets you see actual inventory and make appointments to buy and service a vehicle. Pilots facing hearing loss and difficulty communicating within the cockpit. So Clarity Aloft lightweight headsets block engine noise while enabling clear communication by commercial and private pilots. Setting an arm or leg fracture usually requires a trip to the operating room, but
but FIX has a less invasive multi-plane control device that could be inserted in the emergency room instead. CRAM's multi-cloud hardware and software is to data what your paper shredder at home is to documents. It shreds files, then encrypts the shreds in a new format and distributes them among several cloud servers, safe from hackers but available for rapid retrieval. Anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorders overwhelm many teens and their parents, and effective therapy is hard to find. Solomay Tibibu experienced anxiety disorder and the disordered therapy as a student in Eden Prairie. As a St. Thomas business student, she started nonprofit Anxiety and Teens to share information and support. And as a graduate, she started a for-profit that is developing software and online support to enhance therapy and healing. Rather than rushing into dangerous situations, military and police can throw in a radio-controlled recon scout to send back video and audio of the threat, even in total darkness. This mobile software assists providers in adhering to national guidelines for chronic diseases, such as asthma and diabetes, and it links patients and families to information and follow-up instructions. Thriving in place, rather than moving to long-term care, is made easier by the home stream service that is simply, or that simply but securely connects shut-ins with family members and community services. Renewable fuels are currently produced in large facilities that must then distribute the fuel at increased costs. The growing energy system will produce 25,000 gallons of biodiesel a year from waste food grease or plant oils to fuel farm equipment and industrial vehicles. Using simple screen capture and voice recording, ILOS videos can be produced from any desktop or mobile device to demonstrate a job process or share knowledge. St. Thomas is one of the organizations piloting this new tool, which was created by students and re recent graduates. So that's kind of a whirlwind tour of uh, many of our companies, and it's uh, uh, Thank you. So you can see we cover a lot of ground. After 25 years of technology-based innovation, the Norris Institute has entered its next 25 years the harvest and reseed era. We have just begun to harvest the returns from our many investments, and we hope to be seeding many more innovative companies addressing important unmet needs in the coming years. For St. Thomas business alumni and other entrepreneurs, the Norris Institute offers a unique opportunity to make their education count by making a difference in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, both for sharing the successes of the William C. Norris Institute and also for all that you do to carry on the tradition that began 25 years ago. Now I am delighted to invite Mr. Bob Price, former chairman, president, and CEO of Control Data to come to the stage and offer some remarks on behalf of today's nominee, Norb Berg. Bob, come on up. In the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the 29 years he spent at Control Data, Norberg created a legacy of innovation in human resource management that, to my knowledge at least, is unmatched in U.S. corporate history. An early example of that <clears throat> was an employee assistance program it was called EAR employee advisory resource, which was a 24 hour a day, <clears throat> seven day a week, crisis intervention and counseling service for employees. But, and that's just one example, but like all true innovators, it wasn't just his idea like ear, 
It was the energy and the inspiration that he provided to his organization that caused them to really get involved and leverage the output for the benefit of everybody. One thinks of famous innovators like Thomas Jefferson or closer to home, Seymour Cray and Jim Thornton. Uh, it was the example that they set, the motivation they inspired that mattered most of all. And so it was with Norb. The innovative ideas, projects, and policies that came out of his HR community uh, and not just benefited control data, but the business community at large. And they are presented in some detail in this little book, which I recommend for your nighttime reading or morning reading if you're depressed by the headlines in the paper. <clears throat> it's called HR Pioneers, a history of human resource innovation at Control Data Corporation. <clears throat> and I won't go into all those, you just read the book. But, <clears throat> but one particular program somehow captures the essence of Norb's caring and innovativeness. And, and it's one that encourages taxi drivers, believe it or not, to be alert to uh, needy runaway youth and empowers those drivers to take them to homes for help. In Minneapolis, it paid the fare for runaways to be taken to the bridge for runaway youth. And in Los Angeles, where it was duplicated, the cab drivers took use to the children of the night facilities. Hundreds of young people got help when they needed it most. And as I say, I single out that program uh, typical of, 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 of Norm's ideas. It's simple, creative, takes a common sense approach to solving a problem. It also illustrates not just the depth, but the breadth of his caring. And when Norp retired from control data in June of 1988, he received hundreds of phone calls, letters, and so forth, all by people whose lives he had touched. And I just want to read uh, excerpts from a couple of those letters. An executive from another company, another company, mind you, wrote, You've proven to me, and without a doubt to many others, that high ethics, social concern, and good citizenship are not in Congress with high corporate growth and profitability. And another control data employee wrote, many, many times over the years I've seen you invest a great deal of your personal time and energy into individuals. It always gave me a great sense of reassurance that you would invest in me too. And when the time came that I needed it, it proved to be true because you were there when I needed it most. I've always remembered that last letter in particular because <clears throat> it expressed so simply and so well exactly how I remember Norb as my colleague at Control Data. But again, beyond that, as we just heard from Mike Moore, the W.C. Norris Institute itself is a living expression of Norb's pragmatic approach to perpetuating a philosophy of meeting social ills through innovative business initiatives. So we are here today to celebrate and honor, not just NORB, but the W.C. Norris Institute, which is an institution that epitomizes his approach to business, to society, 
and to life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob, for the insights into what made Norb such an effective and impactful leader, both at Control Data and in our community. And we have another special guest with us today, Nasser Kazamini, Chairman and CEO of NJK Holding Corporation, who would like to make and share some thoughts about his mentor, Norb Berg. Nasser, please join me here at the podium. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear friend Norbert Berg, I'm so pleased to be here with you this afternoon to celebrate the important work and legacy of my dear friend Norbert Berg. Norbert, he's a legend to many in the business world and especially to me. I owe so much to this man. It wasn't, if it wasn't because of him and his integrity and his generosity of heart, I wouldn't be here standing in front of you today. He is in order to show you how special he is, I'd like to give you a story that happened to myself. Many years ago, I was lucky enough to be at Control Data. And as all of you that worked for Control Data, you knew that Bill Norris, Bob Price, and Norbert Berg, they had unbelievable belief on creating entrepreneurs to address the societies and met need. They believed you could create jobs and they were amazed by the fact that there were so many employees in control data that they would come to them and ask them to help to set up their own dream and their own companies. I was one of them. I decided to go back to control data and I was responsible for leasing district area of control data and we were leasing products, preferred product to our customers. And our customers, invariably, they would turn back and say, hey, we don't want to buy it. We don't have enough money. We want to lease that. Although we had a commercial credit that was a huge corporation, but they didn't have a leasing program. And them days, I guess that the government came up with a great idea called ITC, Investment Tax Credit, and most of the business people wanted to take care of that advantage of the tax credit. So every time I went to them with our salespeople, they turned back and said, no, we don't want to lease it. We don't want to, we don't want to purchase, we need to get lease it, so we buy it from the competitor. With that in mind, I decided I'll make my own company. So I headed, prepared a business plan, took it to control later, Ed Strickland, some of you guys remember Eddie, and I sat down and I showed him, and I said, I think I can do a good job. Eddie said, I think you could do a great job. I like this plan, that's great. I only want you to do one thing. If you want to have exclusivity with us, 
you got to go and raise $35 million. I said, what? $35 million? Are you kidding me? And Ed said, no. I think you could do it. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and tell Ed he's wrong. I said, if I could raise, raise $35 million, I'm going to go to Caribbean, sit by the beach, <laughs> and drink tequila all day long. And he said, Nasser, you could do it. You could do it. You can do it. Go ahead and do it. So I said, fine. I headed with my hat in my hand to Wall Street. I checked and called in every bank until I found a live one, Citicorp. They were so interested that they decided to come to Minneapolis. And they wanted to hear it from control data that they have and they will bless this transaction. As it happened, I was very lucky that Norbert was in that meeting at the Catalan Club. And they hit it fine. We had three people from Citicorp, three people from us, and control data, and everybody was having such a fabulous time talking to each other, and I said, yes, you've got it. You've got the deal done, and that's going to be great. So I got up to go to the bathroom for two minutes. By the time I came back, the, all the laughter, all the fun had disappeared. There was quite silent everywhere. And I said to myself, what is going on? And at that time, Norbert said, Nasser, you're here just in time. I think you should hear what I'm going to tell your new friend. He said to my bankers. He looked at me and said, they tried to do an end run on you. They offered me a better return if I could cut you out of the deal and work directly with them as Control Data Corporation. Norm turned to them and said, at Control Data, we trust our employees and treat them with a great deal of integrity and respect. This deal can only be done through Nasser Kazimini. If he's not involved, there is no deal. Gentlemen, that is my answer. And I could not believe what I heard. I looked at the guys and I said, Nasser, don't give up. I said to the people at Citicorp, I said, gentlemen, you remember I asked you for $35 million? The deal has changed. We need $50 million. <laughs> Today is Tuesday. If I don't hear from you by Thursday, 5 o'clock, I will engage with Chase Manhattan Bank. By noon, by noon on Thursday, I received a $50 million commitment from Citicorp. Ladies and gentlemen, only in America, only in America, and only with a guy like Norbert Berg on my side.
needless to say, that deal changed everything for me. Nor touched my life, touched my family's life in every profound way. He's my friend, my mentor, my hero. I will forever be in his debt. Thank you, Norbert. In addition to my work as a chairman of NJK Holding Corporation, I'm proud to be chairman of NECO, the National Ethnic Coalition of Organization, which sponsors the Ellis Island Medal of Honor. Every year, out of 308 million Americans, NECO selects 100 of the most worthy, distinguished citizens. For this prestigious honor, we have presented this award to six United States presidents, Nobel Prize winners, congressmen, senators, ambassadors, sports legend, as well as business leaders, and other great Americans. The one thing our medalists all have in common is that they have made a difference in the lives of their fellow man. They all have the vision and compassion to see beyond themselves and have worked to change the life of others for better. Nor be such a man. Last month on Ellis Island in New York Harbor, surrounded by his family and friends, Norb was one of the 100 recipient of the prestigious Ellis Island Medal of Honor. We are here today to honor Norb for his outstanding accomplishment and groundbreaking work in the field of human resources. And his endless passion and energy for helping his fellow man achieve their dreams. You have brought so many blessings, Norbert, to the lives of others with your friendship and compassion, not to mention your very welcoming hugs. I consider myself the luckiest man on earth to call myself your friend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nasser, for those very, very warm and thoughtful insights. One other piece of information, when we invited Nasser to be one of the uh, speakers today to commend Norb, and he found out about the event, he said, as you heard today, Norb is a friend, but a mentor. And he said, I would like to underwrite the entire event, which he has done. And we thank you very, very much for your generosity, <laughs> Nasser. We have another speaker that I think you're going to be delighted to hear. It's Roger Norris, who is Vice President of Doherty Companies and the son of our benefactor, William C. Norris. Roger, please join me here on the stage.
Thank you, Chris. And uh, on the behalf of my family and the uh, employees of Control Data, uh, thank you to the university, and especially uh, Dean Fudo, uh, Mike Moore, Father Deese, Dr. Sullivan, for your ongoing support of the Norris Institute. I know Dad would be very, very proud. The mission of the Institute says it all, to stimulate innovation by supporting entrepreneurship. And Nora Berg is the perfect person to honor with the William C. Norris Award for Social Entrepreneurship. Norb created the Institute, and he brought it here to St. Thomas. And if Dad were here today, he would speak the same words he wrote to Norb on the inside cover of Jim Worthy's book, Portrait of a Maverick. Here's what he said to Norb. While there are many references in this book to your significant role in control data, only a small part is presented of the broad spectrum of what you did for the company and the many ways that you helped me to achieve corporate goals. Another book would be required to do justice to that. Of the many observations in the book made about your role, the most meaningful is, nor was the glue the glue to maintain a team effort among a large and diverse management group. The glue was your creativity, dedication, integrity, and caring for others. Without it, control data would never have provided what Jim Worthy noted as the new depth and meaning to the role of business in society. I greatly appreciate your many contributions and I have enjoyed every minute of your association. I look forward to a continuing, enjoyable, and fruitful relationship. Bill Norris. Going beyond control data, I live with my dad's trust and respect for Norb. We had some family businesses, and I would often go to dad with issues, who immediately sent me to Uncle Norb. So I'd put on my only suit, polish my shoes, and go see the vice chairman of control data. He's got 60,000 employees to worry about, but he's gonna teach me a business lesson. And so in honoring Norb today, it seems especially appropriate here at a great university to share a few business lessons from Norb. The first lesson is actually strongly supported here at the university, and that's the value of mentorship. It's critical to have a relationship or friendship with someone you trust and respect, who can provide advice on issues in business and in life. In fact, I saw Father Deese's uh, comments on mentorship, where he said, an institution's culture is an institution's soul, passed along by experienced mentoring. And then he added, a good mentor is worth their weight in gold. So here is Norb's valuable lesson about mentorship. When you visit a mentor, don't just lay the problem at their doorstep and ask, what should I do? Instead, to promote your growth and learning, bring your decision in hand, including the options you considered saying, I'm set on doing this, but I'd like your thoughts. It took me a while, but eventually it was very gratifying to hear Uncle Norb say, yeah, that's what I would do, do it. So seek out a mentor or two, and when you find them, Bring them your problem and your solution. The second business lesson is what Norb taught me about being a good employee. Just three simple things. Work hard, learn quickly, and most importantly, be trustworthy. There's a dual lesson here, because the same thing it takes to be a good employee are the things that you should say in an interview. This is a tough economy today, we all know someone who's struggling to find a job. And the lesson here can help them get a job. So when you're in the interview, as Norb says, the boss may not realize it, but he's waiting to hear these three things from you. So don't make him wait, tell him. <laughs> tell him that you work hard, that you come early, and that you stay late, and that you're focused. Tell him that you learn quickly. The boss knows that you're gonna make some mistakes, but can you learn from them and avoid making that mistake again? 
And most importantly, at the end of the interview, look them in the eye and tell them that you're trustworthy. It's what they want to hear. Can they trust you? But if you use these magic words, there's responsibility attached to them. You must live them. You can't just say them. This is a Nora Berg lesson that can live on and on and pay one of life's greatest dividends, a good job. And Norb would be honored. Before giving Norb his award, we have a uh, short video tribute that uh, we'd like to share. Bill Norris, Control Data, and Norb Berg, both by their values and what they did, uh, told people in the less privileged uh, areas of the state that they had a place, that they had a stake in the outcome of things. Norb uh, has been so important to so many people, and he did it all in such a diffident and not self-important way very uh, atypical of what one would expect of a corporate leader. I mean, he was just very straight out, very spontaneous, and uh, very trustworthy. He was always fun to be with. He always had a twinkle in his eye. I'm not sure uh, it really hits him of how much he and Mr. Norris did for this community. Most people don't understand how deep of what he did was. He was such a busy man, but he would take time to come over, and people in the community felt very close to him. These people knew him personally. for all of the activities that have gone out of control data in the administrative human resources functions uh, that were new and are still considered new in the marketplace today are, are due to him. Innovative, uh, taking uh, an idea, implementing with our employees, then recognizing that what we could do is make that into something that we could sell to third parties. was his baby. Um, it was a significant program for uh, control data. So significant that when we launched the program, it was included in the Congressional Register because it was unusual. Their uh, industrial child care, which is now very commonplace, that it was new. Stay Well was another one of his uh, programs that he put in place. Now again, it's commonplace to encourage employees to take care of themselves, to have exercise facilities on site. He was just way, way ahead of his time. And I think the positive influence of Norb and, and um, Mr. Norris is the fact that almost all of these programs still exist. When I got elected mayor, people told me that the most important position for me was my human resource director. Your problems are gonna be people problems. Uh, and, and so it's fascinating that, that somebody who cared so much about people was put in charge of caring about people. I saw him and knew him from the business side because it, it impacted my community and, and control data had a, had a, had a, was important to my community. But then I also got a chance to see him on the personal side as a friend. He's so good with people. You know, my son's trip to his deer farm, you know, it's uh, just a gentle way in which he deals with people. With, with all, God's, all God's creatures, Norb has a gentle touch. He really does. We've been all the way from, you know, from Costa Rica to the high Arctic, uh, fishing trips and hunting trips, and he's a great sportsman, you know, he's a great conservationist. Um, 
So yes, we've enjoyed a lot of time together. He can go into a small town bar and be loud and we don't get kicked out. Whereas if I tried that, we probably would. Norm came to my rescue and he said, well, I've got control data had a place with some property down on the Minnesota River bottom that was private hunting. Norm said, you can come down there and hunt. That was a lifesaver. Get up at five, be down there at six, hunt till 7.30, quarter to eight, be back in the office and do my work. It, it justified me keeping a dog, keeping my guns, taking my kids hunting. So that's how Norb uh, uh, came into my life by offering me that opportunity. What everybody in Minnesota can uh, realize when they go and buy something, they're paying a little more sales tax since 2008. And that driving that whole land legacy amendment that was ultimately put before the, the voters, Norb played an important role there. He's positive, he's encouraging, and he sees in other people their goodwill and their good side. In the organization, whether you were Bill Norris or you were down in the mailroom, you didn't see a different Norberg. He encouraged people and encouraged you to kind of push the envelope. Uh, even if you thought you couldn't do something, he would say, yes, you can. When we made a handshake, whether it was at the Lexington or in the mayor's office or in Norb's office, that handshake was as good as gold. That's what trust is. He's just a guy who's been very influential to a lot of different people, especially people who are, are disadvantaged, people who don't have money. He's not a friend, he's a special friend, and there aren't many special friends in your life. Norb qualifies for that. I feel as hundreds and maybe thousands of St. Paul people feel about controlled data, and particularly Norb Berg, and that is if you say the name, usually a smile will come with it because that's what he conveyed, a sense that we can do this and we can do it together. It was quite wonderful. Find out what your boss wants and do it. And uh, I've always remembered that. I don't always do it. I wish I could adhere to that. But it's a great goal, and uh, Norb obviously did it, and uh, many times over is deserving of the recognition. He might say, well, we had a lot of good people. You can have good people, but you need good leadership. And he exemplified uh, good leadership. Congratulations on uh, putting in place programs that made a huge difference in people's lives, including mine. What happened between 1970 and 1989 will never happen in America again. Norb can look back with great satisfaction on what he's accomplished, not only in his personal life, but in the lives of people he has affected. Everybody here tonight has something to do with Norb, and he can probably tell you stories about how he has insightfully done something not for any other reason, just because he's a good guy. When I say that I love you, I, I really mean that I, that I love you. For all that you've done for, for my community, you, you've been a good shepherd, uh, you are a great man, you have done so much, and I'm, I'm honored to be your friend, and I'm honored to be able to say that to you tonight. And my only regret is that I'm not there to give you a big hug. Norb, if you would uh, please join me on stage. <laughs> Norb, on uh, behalf of the Norris Institute and the University of St. Thomas, we are proud to bestow upon you the William C. Norris Award for Social Entrepreneurship. And I'd like to read the uh, plaque. It says the William C. Norris Award for Social Entrepreneurship, presented June 5th, 2014, to Norbert R. Berg in recognition of his lifetime dedication to innovation in human resource programs and in applying business strategies that address urgent social needs. To you, Norbert.
Careful now, my family's fond of saying Norb cries at bake sales, so. <laughs> Madam President, Reverend Fathers, Dean Pito, family and friends. Thank you for the award. I am honored to accept it. Thanks to the committee who worked hard to uh, put this event together, it included Roger Norris, Bob Price, Rhonda Donahue, Kevin Berg, Maggie Zamoski, Brendan Banigan, and Mike Moore. Thanks. And thanks, Frank Dahl, for all the help you gave the committee and all the help you gave me over the years. Nasser and Yvonne, thank you for sponsoring the luncheon. Ever since Nasser left Control Data to start his own business, uh, we've been very close friends, and I'm deeply indebted to him for many favors, but most of all for his friendship. Nasser Bill Norris was so proud of you. Uh, he admired your integrity, he admired your vision, and he admired your guts. And I know he wished he could have cloned you as an entrepreneur. I've been asked to comment about the symbol on the award. It's a Russian thistle. And now most control data alums here are familiar with that symbol of innovation uh, at Control Data, and here's what, how it came about. When Bill Norris was a young man, uh, he had to go back and run the farm for a while because his father died suddenly, and it was during the, um, the drought days, the Dust Bowl days, uh, and you know, no rain, no feed, and nothing to put away to feed the cattle in the winter months, and Bill remembered that he had seen cattle in good times eat a Russian thistle. So uh, he thought, what? I'm going to harvest Russian thistles. They grow like weeds, if you'll excuse the pun. And uh, I'm going to feed them to the cattle. Well, he started uh, bailing them up and tried to hire people to help him. He got some, but some thought he was just crazy. And they wouldn't work for him. So. Uh, he, he fed the cattle thistles over the winter, saved the herd, and saved the farm. And that's how the Russian thistle earned its spot at Control Data for recognizing innovation. And to earn the spot on this award is very high praise for our favorite thistle, the Russian thistle. That's very meaningful to me. Thank you. Well, some very nice things were said about me today. And I was reminded of an occasion some years ago when the mayor of a city was uh, introducing me, and uh, he, he knew in, that I was going to tell the people there about a new control data plant for their city. But nevertheless, when he introduced me, he called me a great and noble man. Now, he might have been a little biased because he knew what I was going to say, but he called me a great and noble man. And uh, after the event was over, my wife had accompanied me, and we were in the cab going back to the hotel, and she said, what are you thinking about? And I said, well, I'm just wondering how many great and noble men there are in this world. <laughs> and in the inimitable manner of a wife, she said, well, I don't know either how many great and noble men there are in this world, but I know this, there's one less than you think there are. <laughs> And another memory, as I was listening to all these wonderful things, had to do with Gordy Wise. Many of you remember Gordy. He was a co-worker of ours. He died prematurely. And uh, he was a vice president of public relations. And he was driving to Green Bay, Wisconsin. He was a couple hours east of the Twin Cities. And he saw a sign that said, Edgar, one mile off the main highway. And... Uh, he said, Edgar, that's where Norberg grew up. He always talks about Edgar. He says, I got to go and see what Edgar looks like. Well, Edgar had a population of 707 people in those days, so it didn't take him long. But uh, he said, besides, my, I need fuel for my car. So he drove into Edgar, stopped at the first gas station he came to, 
and ask the attendant to fill it up. My brother Dave knows which station that would be. And uh, the old attendant was, came out and he was putting the fuel in. And Gordy said to him, are there still bergs in this town? The old guy said, yep. He said, did you know any of them? The old guy said, yep. He said, uh, did you know one of them named Norbert? Yep. He said, uh, you know, he's a big shot in a big company up in the Twin Cities. They got really big. I mean, they got like 60,000 employees. Did you know that? The old guy says, yep. He said, well, what do the people in Edgar have to say about that? And the old guy said, they don't say nothing. They just laugh. <laughs> I need that for perspective. Once Bill Norris and I were having a philosophical discussion, and uh, we concluded that if you grow up in a small town or in rural America, you find out quicker in life who you are. That's a great discussion piece, by the way, over a bottle of wine, and we didn't have any on that occasion. But anyhow, for some reason, I know who I am and know that I'm very fortunate to have a great wife and life partner for the past 56 years and 348 days. Uh, I know I've been blessed with great sons, daughters-in-law, grandsons, siblings. I know I've got some of the best friends in the world, and many of them are here today. Uh, two of the people who spoke, Dennis and Bud, have been hunting and fishing partners for over 40 years. And in an honest moment, and Bud is honest most of the time, he would tell you that everything he knows about hunting and fishing, he learned from Dennis and me. <laughs> I also see my friend, Dr. Jetzer, whom I'm indebted to, who's kept me alive for 40 years. Tom Jetzer is also one of the twins doctors. He's also been a good friend. I know that I've been fortunate to be associated with a, a group of outstanding co-workers, many of them are here today, starting with Bill Norris and Bob Price. Bill was chairman, Bob was president, and I was deputy chairman. Bob was a great president. He was a great leader who epitomized integrity and had a passion for driving innovation. He was a, a southern gentleman who married a southern belle and he's been a good friend. Thank you, Bob. Bill, I'll say more about in a minute. But there are many others that are here today. And they were a collection of the brightest, most visionary, most caring, and most innovative people ever assembled under a corporate flag. The achievements that were cre accredited to me were thanks to them. I was just the surfer who rode the waves over and over that they created. Destiny was kind to me in arranging my association with Bill Norris as his deputy. I mean, how lucky can a person be? I met with him every morning at 9 o'clock. That was quite an experience, as Bob would tell you. He was a master at delegation. Just no word said, no... No, it never told you how to do something, just whatever you want. One time he told me, go to Korea, take whoever you want, come back when you got a plant open. Uh, that's the true story. It was Bob Hall I took with me, Bob. Uh, I told him once, I said, Bill, someone asked me, what's it like to meet with Bill Norris every morning at 9 o'clock? And I said, Bill, I told him it was like having an accident every morning on the same corner. <laughs> he, he enjoyed the joke or I wouldn't be here. A bill has been called uh, the Paul Bunyan of industry in his era. He was. The Norris Institute is one example of how his legacy continues to live on. He launched and led a company uh, with five billion in revenue, 65,000 employees around the world, 47 different countries. Uh, the leader in building the world's most powerful computers and computer services, another world leader, and in uh, computer peripherals. And through all this, 
emerged as a company that cared about its people and was selected as one of the top 100 companies in the United States to work for. And it was also picked as one of the top 100 companies for females to work. Bill was passionate about job creation, as you've heard and have concluded. In his brilliant mind, it was all very simple. Underemployment or unemployment was directly correlated to spousal abuse, child abuse, drug abuse, alcoholism, crime, and a host of social injuries and social ills. And the cost of remediating these social ills was enormous, and it was paid by taxes and therefore in part by corporate taxes. So in addition to being the right thing to do, business had an enlightened self-interest in creating jobs. He pointed out often that 80% of the new jobs were uh, created by companies that employed fewer than 20 people. And he worked hard at anything that would help small companies succeed launch and succeed, actually. He was involved in setting up the Minnesota Cooperation Office uh, and the Minnesota Seed Capital Fund. He was not a pol political person at all, but he served on President Reagan's job creation task force. Within control data, he encouraged uh, launching things like the Business Advisory Group, the Business and Technology Centers, the Seed Capital Funds, all these businesses aimed at helping small businesses get off the ground and flourish. All this made it very appropriate that when Bill retired from control data, I suggested to the board as a gesture of appreciation and recognition, the Norris Institute should be set up. I recommended a $10 million initial grant from control data to get it launched. This was readily done, thanks for your help, Bob Price, to enable and encourage Bill to continue his efforts in launching and in nourishing small businesses. Later, when it was up and running and flourishing, Bill and the Institute Board wanted it to be housed permanently somewhere. And that's how, uh, after looking around, uh, we found the perfect place to be right here at St. Thomas University. Uh, the university and uh, there are the uninvested endowment funds, as someone pointed out, were the dowry that came with it, and St. Thomas uh, matched that. Well, Emerson once said, an institution is the length and shadow of one man. And here we are. I'm confident that Bill's looking down on us today and smiling because the Norris Institute has carried on his work. Congratulations to Dean Puto, Mike Morris, St. Thomas University, and all the people who have helped make that happen. You've done a great job of carrying the torch forward. And thank you for recognizing my involvement. I'm honored to accept the award, and I remember something Bob Hope said one time when he was given an award. He said, I feel very humble, but I think I have enough strength of character to fight it. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I want to follow that, Norb, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I have one last announcement to make. To honor and recognize Norb and his status as the first recipient of the William C. Norris Award for Social Entrepreneurship, I am very pleased to announce that the University of St. Thomas is establishing the William C. Norris Scholarship for Social Entrepreneurship made possible by the generosity of the friends and family of Norbert R. Berg.
The purpose of this scholarship is to support the activities of future social entrepreneurs who, like NORB, are addressing today's social challenges with creativity and energy. We would not, could not be more thrilled to have this opportunity to offer this scholarship to future generations of business leaders. Thank you all very much for your help in that. And in closing, I encourage each of you here with us today to help us to continue our commitment to fostering the next generation of business leaders and the next generation of socially responsible, successful, and impactful businesses in our great state and across this wonderful nation. I thank you all for being here today. I thank our guests. I thank our honored guests. And I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you very much. Our event is concluded.